So uh, when you talk about going back to people, uh, a lot of uh, the people that, let's say, are considered the A-plus people, right? It's actually hard to, to access their deals, right? There's only it's kind of select few um, investors that can have that kind of access. And I've almost heard you talk about the next wave, right? Let's say they're the B-plus on their way to be an A and then one day A-plus. What are those, those characteristics that makes an A-plus player? And what are some things that people can look for in management teams that they can look at and almost as, as almost like a scout, say, you know what, this, this person or this team has those qualities and in five years, they could be in that A-plus seat. A players uh, invariably started the business in their 20s. So what happens is, you know how Malcolm Gladwell talks about having 10,000 oh, hours? Yeah. Well, they have 10,000 hours by their 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, most of their competition is coming into the racket having sold cars or sold real estate or done something else. Mm -hmm. They come into the racket in their 30s. They don't have their 10,000 hours until their 50s. The A players, the Ross Beatties of the world, the Robert Friedlands of the world, uh, the Clyde Johnsons of the world, all started in the business mm -hmm. in their 20s. They were already players. They'd already had some sort of success. And by the way, a failure or two along the way by the time they hit their 30s. And that's, that's, that's also important to failure, is that, is that failure is not necessarily a red critical. flag. Critical, critical. Yeah, nobody I know uh, got through this life uh, and became a real success uh, without having a couple of missteps, uh, a couple of serious missteps. And I guess the, the difference is the obsession, or if there is a failure, to turn it around. Well, that's where I was gonna go. Uh, intelligence is important, but determination, mm -hmm. grit, uh, the ability to carry a company through, as an example, which we've just had seven bad years, mm -hmm. uh, that takes special fortitude where you do everything right, everything right, and the company still isn't working, and you just have to, because you have faith in your team and you have faith in your asset, pull it through. That unbelievable determination. I remember the first time I met Clive Johnson uh, in the 80s. You could just tell. Uh, to make that company a success, he would chew through concrete, no doubt, <laughs> like fire in the valley. Yeah. Uh, you know, you'd say, Clive, what a beautiful day. He said, yeah, yeah, absolutely a beautiful day to talk about Bima. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. It wasn't the circular selling thing. It was just the way his mind worked. Yeah. The same with Robert Friedland. Yeah. You know, uh, it, to them, in a sense, it wasn't work. It was a mission. It was fun. Uh, even when it was hard, it was fun. So I really, really, really look for determination. And we touched on this earlier. Uh, I look for partners. Uh, Doug Casey taught me way back in the early 80s. <clears throat> Somebody isn't going to work hard enough to make a junior mining company a success if they're not going to get rich. They're not going to do it to get you rich. They're happy to get you rich. They appreciate the fact that they contributed to your lifestyle and your, your reputation and all that kind of stuff. But they're doing it to get rich. Mm -hmm. And somebody who doesn't own a lot of stock a lot of stock that they paid for, not gave themselves, is important. Not just skin in the game. You know, it's not just the fact that if there's blood on the table, some of it's going to be theirs. It's going to be that in order to work the decade or so that it takes to really, 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 truly get ahead, uh, somebody has to be able to make a real difference for themselves and their family. And importantly, if they're capitalists, which the good ones are, uh, they are using this first deal to get the capital to build the second deal. Mm -hmm. That's very important as far as I'm concerned. I also, um, I look for people who are generous in the sense that uh, they want their team to prosper too. I remember when um, Bob Quartermain succeeded with Silver Standard uh, and succeeded as an understatement. We took that stock from a 72 cent placement with a full warrant, mercifully, mm -hmm. to $45 uh, over eight years. And I got a wonderful call from a woman who was the receptionist at Silver Standard, thanking me for my contributions to the company because her options package allowed her as a single mother to buy a condo. Now, Bob Quartermain didn't have to drop options all the way down through the organization. Mm -hmm. He could have hogged them all himself but he wasn't looking at taking a stock from a dollar to a dollar seventy-five. He was looking to build a big company. And to do that, he needed everybody wearing the same jersey, everybody on the same team. He got the options all the way down to, a, to the receptions. So somebody who's pragmatically generous mm -hmm. is somebody who you want to do business with, too.